Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Today, I finally have the chance to review a watch that has been a proper grail for me since its release. A watch that I put my name down on a list for with a local retailer, the only watch I have ever done that for. A watch that I got the call for around six months later, just as the entire world dropped off the COVID cliff in March 2020 and I didn't buy it. A watch that I have been tempted to buy since then as it has only become more appealing and more expensive since its release in 2018. That watch is the Black Bay 58. Retro perfection in the perfect size for my wrist. From a brand as strong as Tudor from within the Rolex umbrella but without the whiff of, well, you know, that has been surrounding Rolex more and more in recent years. That's not to say there wasn't FOMO and hype around this one at points too, but there has always been something stopping me from buying it. Today, I finally get to give it the review treatment, to see it on my wrist, to feel it on my wrist, to see if it really is the grail that I've always thought it is, and crucially, to compare it directly to the one thing that's always stopped me from buying it. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. All right, let's get into the box. At this point, I would normally talk about price, but let's not cheapen my love for the Black Bay 58. Let's not discuss something as tawdry as cash quite yet. Don't worry, I will circle back to it. Let's talk about where this watch fits into the Tudor range. Tudor in 2022 could legitimately be called a one-trick pony. Just look at the number of different Black Bay variants that they now sell. Since introducing this line just over 10 years ago, they sell precious little else these days, frankly. Now, I'm okay with that because I like the trick. I like the Black Bay look. I like this Black Bay in particular, the M79030N-0001, the Black Bay 58. And what's not to like, just look at that thing. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is a homage, legitimately this one could be described as a homage to a previous reference Tudor. The reference 7924, oddly enough, from 1958. And I say homage because it's not a one-for-one -one copy, as you can see. The current Black Bay 58 has the signature, the now signature at least, snowflake hands, rather than the Mercedes hands of the original. And this watch also has what I think are just about perfect proportions. Those being 39 millimeters in diameter, 11.7 mil thickness with a 47 and a half lug to lug, 20 mil lug width, there's a nice taper on this bracelet, down to 16, back up to 18 at the clasp, sized up for me, seven inch wrist, 139 grams, as I said, just about perfect. Case finish isn't too bad either. It is a lovely, high polish, lustrous side to the case. There's a high polish bevel running lug tip to lug tip as well. Unguarded crown, just like the original reference from the late 1950s with the traditional Tudor rose there on it. But we do have brushed upper lug surfaces and an all brush bracelet, coin edge bezel as well. And yes, even more lovely shine on the opposite side to the crown. And it is a cracking bracelet as well. 316L steel throughout, by the way, brushed upper surfaces. Now these are full rivets, but there are multi-sections to each of those links and female end links. Small lug to lug, compact diameter dimension and female end links, it just wears perfectly. The clasp, not quite perfect though, it will be featuring in a fairly limited, admittedly, moans and niggles section later on. Looks good, it has that Tudor shield shape in the fastener mechanism, unfold it there, all stainless, obviously all milled, obviously, but only three holes of micro adjust. Coin edge bezel as discussed, and it is 60 click. Oh. oh, such a nice snappy feel to it as well. The Pelagos had a great bezel and this one has a great bezel as well. That is a matte aluminium insert. Before you pile on in the comment section, I'm not sure that ceramic would have worked nearly as well given this overall retro look. Talking of retro looks, that is a boxed domed sapphire crystal designed to mimic the look of acrylic as well. That means you do get a little bit of bounce back here. I'm not sure how much AR they have used on the underside. Don't think there's any on the top side. 
Now case back, unlike some of the newer release models, the gold and the silver Black Bay 58s, the OG eschews the sapphire display case back and sticks to the traditional sterile Tudor Rolex style case back. But by the power of video editing, I can show you what's behind it because I have reviewed one of those Tudors with the display case back earlier on this year. That is a Tudor in-house caliber MT5402, 27 joule movement introduced with the Black Bay 58 in 2018, 70 hour power reserve. And they managed to do that while retaining the high beat rate of 28,800. And of course it's chronometer rated as well. Now that means minus four to plus six in this one, scraping in just on the bottom of that range. But yeah, that's a pretty healthy looking time grapher, isn't it? From a healthy looking time grapher to a lovely looking dial and handset. I am a sucker for black and gilt. I go weak at the knees when I see that color combo. So it is no surprise that I have been in love with this particular watch for the last four years. Classic Tudor slash Rolex layout, applied indices, big long triangle at 12 o'clock, batons at the three, six and nine, circular applied indices everywhere else and no date on this model, keeping that look super clean. The Tudor branding is printed above the pinion with the shield at Tudor and Genève and 200 meters, 660 feet chronometer officially certified printed beneath the pinion. Printed minute track around the outer edge also in gold, matching the gold snowflake handset with Fotina. I will show you the loom in just a minute or two. And matching the gold Arabics and markers in that aluminium bezel insert. Lovely red triangle up there at the 12 o'clock with loom pip, another Tudor signature. Not much else to say here really. I love it. And the loom is surprisingly good as well. As discussed, there is some kind of Fotina coloration on the hands and indices, meaning we have that old radium style loom, so a darker green color than you get from a brighter C3 style loom. These don't generally last as long, but when we turn the speed up on this one, it does very, very well for itself. Anecdotally, coming in from sunlight into a dark room, this watch really does glow very brightly, which again, I love. And I love the way it wears 39, 20, 11.7 mil thick, unlike the super chunky 14.7 of the Black Bay GMT that I looked at a couple of weeks ago and the Black Bay Pro featuring that same movement. This one, so, so nice on wrist. Female end links help. Lug to lug is reasonable at under 48. Yeah, just gorgeous. 139 grams, so 10 grams under what you'd expect if it was a full size 40 mil watch. Again, that helps with comfort. And I watch this size, this weight. I have options as to where I wear it, either above the knuckle or below the knuckle, as I'll show you later. Overhead legibility is very good as well, I think, thanks to those gold tone hands and indices. And it's a big handset as well. Look at that minute hand all the way out to the edge of the dial. But I don't think it looks too big. I think it looks again just about perfect. Outside natural light you can see a slight grainy texture to that matte black dial and you can see the high polished elements to the watch's case playing with the light and how that box dome sapphire crystal also affects the light play on this one. On wrist again I cannot stress how nicely this watch wears. It just feels really good. Feels nice and solid but not too heavy because it isn't too heavy and if you look down the wrist how much gap there virtually no gap there. This one just curves a little bit at the edges. It hugs the wrist. It's so nice to wear. As discussed, because this watch is just slightly smaller and just slightly lighter, I would tend to wear it one of two ways, either above the knuckle like this, or I'd use that micro adjustment in the clasp, add one hole, wear it a bit looser and wear it below the knuckle like this. Either way, it's fine. It's really comfortable. All right, all right, I'm sure you can feel the love in the room today, but there is still gonna be a moans and niggle section, or perhaps it should be called a nitpick section today. There's a couple of things I think they could improve upon. Dial text for a start. It's not a big watch and I reckon there's two lines, too much text on there for me ideally anyway. I would delete Genève and I would also delete officially certified. Genève would be the first thing to go though. I think it is a little bit squashed because that triangle at 12 is extra long and extra pointy. And that retro crystal, the acrylic look is a bit of a double-edged sword. You do get more light play with this one, which isn't always ideal, but I guess that's something that you're gonna to have to get used to. It kind of comes with the retro reissue territory, doesn't it? And the clasp, I did say I would come back to the clasp a bit later on. Look, it's lovely, but three holes of micro adjust, I could do with four. 
And frankly, I could do with on the fly adjustment for the price they are asking for one of these. The more recently introduced Black Bay 58 Bronze has on the fly adjustment, as does the new Black Bay Pro, which to all intents and purposes is a Black Bay 58 GMT. They need to bring it to the rest of the range and they need to bring it to the rest of the range now, quite frankly. But as discussed, that is more a nitpick list than a proper moans and niggles section. So if you think this watch is so amazing, Jody, why haven't you bought one? Well, there's one reason that I guess I can split it into two. Surprise, surprise, the Scotsman's gonna talk about price again. Well, 5,150 Aussie dollars, not a drop in the ocean. I remember when these were 4,250 at launch back in 2018, so they've added 900 bucks, 20% onto the list price over the last four years. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think seriously if I drop 5K on a watch. Used values are also really, really strong, and there's no chance of getting a discount from a Tudor dealer. Plus, there's another six months to wait still for one of these. So there's that. But there's also this. If I want a retro reissue dive watch that ticks pretty much the same set of boxes, I own one. It's the Oris Diver 65. I mean, the similarities between these two watches are glaringly obvious. The Oris was released a couple of years before the Black Bay in 2015, and it was really surfing that retro reissue wave at the time. It's got rose gold hands and indices. It's got a black dial. It's got a rivet bracelet. It's got an unguarded crown and a coin edge bezel. Look, the Tudor is a much better watch. It feels much more solidly constructed. The bracelet is much nicer than the one on the Oris. And the movement, that in-house Tudor is way better than the base model Solita SW200 with a red rotor on it in the back of the Oris. But, um, the Oris is already paid for. The full retail price on the Oris is 3,200. And if I was looking at these two watches in a dealer, there would be no doubt about it. I would go for the Tudor every single time, but no offense, Oris, nobody pays full retail for Oris. And I certainly didn't. I paid just over half of that for a very, very lightly used example. When you're getting up to these prices, it's like you're trading in a car, and that's the situation I'm in at the moment. I love the Tudor Black Bay 58. It is absolutely gorgeous. But then again, I also love the Oris Diver 65, and it's paid for. Sure, I could sell it and trade up, as they say, but it would cost me several thousand dollars, and I'm just not sure that it's worth it to me at this stage quite yet. But maybe one day I will look at my bank account statement and say, hey, there's four grand in there that I don't need and can't think of anything better to spend it on. I'm going to trade up to a Tudor Black Bay 58. And if indeed that day does ever come, I will know that I'll be trading up to a watch that is absolutely stunning and just about perfect for me. So there you have it, the Black Bay 58, as lovely as I always knew it was going to be. 5,000 plus Aussie dollars now and very firm used values. Looks like I have two reasons for not buying one. If you like Tudor, I have reviewed a number of them in the past. Why not check out my review of the very tasty Titanium Pelagos or the Baller 58 in 18 karat gold. Thanks for watching. See you again in a future video.